Hamilton, would you please stand and welcome Jane Hammond as she comes and speaks. Welcome back to the promised land of your, of your family. Thank you, guys. Hey, if you don't mind just remaining standing for just a second, first of all, greetings. For those of you that don't know, this is where my family comes from. My dad is from Booton, right around the corner, right? My dad is a Bootonite. He's getting ready to turn 90 years old. So he said, you're going to my old stomping grounds up there. Before we get into the word tonight, um, I, I was struck by something today when I was just reading and praying about New Jersey, and I saw that New Jersey was the third ratifier of the Constitution. Isn't that interesting? See, because part of my word at the beginning of this year had to do with the third day anointing. And so I've been really caught this year every time I see something lining up with the number three. And one of the reasons for that is because, of course, Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day. How many are excited about that? Amen. He was not raised on the second day. He was not raised on the fourth day. He was raised on the third day to fulfill a biblical pattern. And I'm not preaching on this tonight, but let me just say, every time you see something in Scripture that's preceded by the phrase, on the third day, it means God's coming down and doing his stuff. And so when I was praying about this today and I saw that, you know, that this was the third ratifier, I just thought, well, there's another three, you know. And three is considered to be the number of the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I was reading January the 1st of this year, and I was uh, in John chapter 14 and verse 16. I've got you standing for a reason. Uh, John chapter 14 and through John chapter 16, and twice Jesus said, I have to go away from you so that I can send the Holy Spirit to you. And he said, when he comes to you, he's going to indwell you. He's not just going to come upon you and come and go. He's actually going to indwell you. And scripture says, calls him in the Greek, the paraclete. He will be to you a paraclete which is translated, he will be a comforter, he will be a helper. How many need some help? Some of us need more help than others, okay? Said that he will be a helper. Yes, Pastor Peter's got both hands up. Apostle Peter's got both hands up. He will be a helper to you. And what's interesting is when you actually dig down in the Greek, you actually find that that word paraclete also means he will be your defense attorney, I won't ask how many here need a defense attorney, okay? Spiritually, how many need a defense attorney, okay? <laughs> but you know what was interesting? I was reading in the Passion Translation, and I was reading the notes by Brian Simmons, and he brought in the Aramaic. And he brought something in that I think is so important for what we are dealing with this year, and this year in particular. And it is that in the Aramaic, the word was not paraclete, the word was parakleto, parakleto, two words, parak, P-A-R-A-Q, which means one that comes to end, to finish, and to save from, and leto means the curse. How many understand that Jesus put a curse breaker on the inside of you? Jesus put a curse destroyer. He put somebody inside of you that ends every effect of the curse, that saves us from every effect of the curse. And I'll tell a little bit later on tonight that we started this year off in warfare. Is there anybody here that did not start this year in warfare? Anybody here that's like, man, I've just been on easy street ever since this year, because I want you to pray for me, Okay. How many have had a little bit of warfare this year? Amen. But let me just say this. In Numbers chapter 23, when Balak, whose name means the destroyer, he hired Balaam. Remember Balaam and the donkey and that whole thing? When he hired Balaam to come, he said, I want you to curse these people. 
And I want you to listen to what his response was. He said, I cannot curse them because the shout of the king is in their midst. I want you to know tonight, we cannot be cursed because the shout of the king is in our midst. You may be facing warfare, but the shout of the king is in our midst. You may be battling battles, but I'm telling you, you cannot be cursed. The shout of the king is in our midst. And God is giving us victory in this place tonight. And God is giving you victory in New Jersey tonight, in New York tonight, in Pennsylvania tonight. God, I heard the Lord say, I am waking up the land. And I heard the Lord say specifically 42 years ago, and I haven't had any chance to research anything because I heard this in worship, but he said 42 years ago, a spirit of slumber came on this part of this region of the nation. A spirit of spiritual slumber fell upon this nation and people forgot who they were. But the Lord said that I'm waking up the land. And I'm breaking off the curse. Yes, I'm breaking off the curse of corruption. I'm breaking off the curses of wickedness. I'm breaking off the curses of mammon. I'm breaking off the curses of uh, that which is illegal and illegitimate. And the Spirit of the Lord says, but I want you to know that I am waking up a mighty army. I'm raising up a mighty army in this place, says the Lord. And the Lord says, just even as you see it springing up all over the nation on college campuses, and even as you see revival beginning to spring up here and there, the Lord says, I want you to know there's a revival anointing that has everything to do with the spirit of revolution that is in the land in this region, says the Lord. For I am bringing the spirit of revolution, but the people that are getting touched by my spirit, they're going to fight back against apathy. They're going to fight back against complacency. They're going to fight back and they're going to lead a revolution. I hope you've seen the movie Jesus Revolution. The Lord says there is a Jesus Revolution coming that is going to invade New Jersey and New York and Delaware and Pennsylvania and throughout this up this region right here. The Spirit of the Lord says there's an awakening that is coming. The Lord says I'm shaking the ground. I'm awakening the ground. And the Lord says so quit cursing your ground. Ground. Quit cursing your ground. Quit cursing your land. Quit talking about how dark the atmosphere is. The Spirit of the Lord says, I'm shining my light down upon New Jersey and I'm bringing forth the spirit of awakening and I'm breaking off every curse. The Lord says, You cannot be cursed, for the shout of the king is in your midst. Give a shout to the King of Kings. Give a shout to the Lord of Lords. Woo! And I, I see this company of revolutionaries, and they are rebelling against cynicism against intellectualism, against the mind-binding spirit that's held this region captive, against generational unbelief, generational unbelief, and they are going to rebel against it. And the Lord says that their rebellion is going to look like praise and worship. Their rebellion is going to look like radical faith. And the Lord says, in case you're not getting this, I'm talking about your children, and I'm talking about your children's children that are going to be visited by the Lord, not just on college campuses, but in secular high schools. I'm going to visit secular high schools. I'm going to visit secular middle schools and junior highs. I'm going to even visit elementary schools, says God, because I am pouring out my spirit in this region, says God, and I am waking up the ancient roots in this land. I'm stirring up the ancient wells in this land. So the Lord says, rejoice my people for an awakening has already begun. Oh, rejoice my people for there is a pushing back against that which the enemy thought would rule. 42 years ago, it was as though this, this region fell asleep. 
And when it fell asleep, it fell apart. And the Spirit of the Lord says, watch and see when I wake it up. Watch and see. And the Lord says, from this place that people have viewed as great deep darkness, the Lord says, my glory is going to shine. My glory is going to shine, says the Lord. I'm going to set churches on fire. I'm going to set historical churches on fire with my spirit, says the Lord. I'm going to start pouring out my spirit like I did in the 60s and 70s. And I'm going to start releasing a charismatic renewal. But it's going to be a whole new thing, says God. It's going to be holiness. It's going to be radical. It's going to be a pushing back against that which the enemy has claimed for his own. But I'm looking for revolutionaries. I'm looking for revolutionaries. The Lord says, I'm looking for volunteers for this revolution. I'm looking for those that say, Lord, I will love not my life into the death. I will give myself to this. I will fight for this nation, and I will fight for this generation, and I will war in the spirit to wake this nation up and remind her who it is she's called to be, to wake this region up and remind her who she's called to be. Right now, the Lord says, I'm taking authority over every curse of apathy, over every curse of spiritual slumber, over every spirit of hopelessness and helplessness that says, we've heard this before, we've done that before, we've prayed those prayers before. But the Lord says, tonight, the prince has kissed sleeping beauty, and she's waking up. Turn to your neighbor and say, she's waking up. She's waking up. She's waking up. Come on, God's waking up a people. God's waking up a people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.